April 14th. Uh, this is the uh, Van Boxel Creek. That's pretty good flow. Of course, the roads are not open yet. As you can see, I'm skiing in here today. Beautiful day. And a lot of water. We like that. This is spring number two, and you can see that all the water is going into the pipeline. A little bit of it's getting around and going down the hill, but that probably isn't more than one gallon per minute. It's been raining a lot here in western Colorado due to the monsoons, and we've got the pipeline closed at this point so that all the water is filling the pipe and it's just coming out the top of the spring. The flow you see here is both springs combined because this one is just a little bit lower than the other springs, so that water flows up through here. To get a good measurement of how much water we're getting, we're going to use a little bucket here to measure how long it takes to fill two gallons. So we just measure how long it takes to fill this bucket up, and then we'll divide that number into 60, and multiply it times two to know how many gallons per minute it gets. We'll do the reading a number of times so that we can average the readings and be sure we have a pretty accurate measure. The average of them works out to about 12 seconds. 12 divided into 60 equals 5, which means you could fill 5 of them in a minute, which means you get about 10 gallons a minute. The system was originally designed for 50 to 80 gallons a minute, so we're really struggling here even though it's raining a lot. The aquifer is just not producing water like it used to. Having only 10 gallons a minute is enough to fill the pipe to a really high pressure. But for how long, once you start it up? This time of year, we have monsoonal flow. And these buildups behind me turn into thunderstorms by the afternoon. And we've had quite a bit of activity later in the summer here, with rain filling the creeks and the water flowing over the ground quite well. But that's no indication how much water is underground. The aquifers, I don't really know how long it takes to feed the water that comes down through and then goes into the springs. Using this 3D map on an iPad, you can see where the springs are here. And about a mile away, this is an area where, historically, water has fed from springs up here down into this area and then underground down this way to the springs. But now, people have diverted that water from those springs into a pond here that I believe drains underground into the river valley and goes down this way. So that's what has really killed the flow. There's no way of proving it, but that's my suspicion as to why the springs are flowing so low this year. I've always been able to set the flow at somewhere between 9 and maybe 15 or that'd be 18 and that'd be 24 opening it up this way. But uh, now that the springs are flowing only 10 gallons a minute, I can only get it to about here, which is 4 or 5, before the pipe starts draining. And the minimum setting that the machine will allow it to actually run on is about 6. And even at that, it's draining the pipe at this point. So this system is really, really compromised at this point. The water that you see coming out of the pipe here used to go into a natural sort of swampy area around the corner here and flow north. The water is being piped from springs underground now into this pipe, into this pond, and instead of going out over the marshy area over there, it's going underground out to the river which runs from the south to the north here. We've had an early fall time snowstorm here and came up to measure the amount of water coming out of the springs and it's still really low. This is both springs combined and I'm going to measure it but I don't think it's much. 
Thompson and Howe safety shutoff system allows you to set the threshold at which the device will shut down. I've reduced it down to 50 hertz because I know that the water will fall down in terms of pressure in the pipe because it's going to drain the pipe and as it does it will slow the system down. Once it gets to 50 hertz or below the system will shut down. A very accurate way to read the amount of wattage the machine is producing is to measure how much time it takes this disk to do one rotation. Once you know that in seconds, if you divide the number 25,920 by the number of seconds that it takes to go around once, it will give you a pretty exact reading on the number of watts that the gener system is generating. In order to monitor the amount of power the system is generating, I created a FileMaker database that runs on either a computer, an iPhone, or an iPad. And it allows you to start the system when the meter is at a particular spot. It allows you to put in the reading of the meter. It tells you the time that the reading was taken. It allows you to put in the setting that the flow is set on. It automatically puts in the pressure and the voltage and allows you to take notes. When you stop it, it basically determines on the basis of time how much wattage is being produced and it does that math that I mentioned earlier. I'm using this device called a kilowatt to be able to read the hertz that's going on in the system. As the pipe drains, this will get lower and you will see it drop down to 50 hertz eventually and then the system will shut down. But this is a way for me to monitor inside the house when the power is going to shut off. I'm currently getting about four hours before it shuts off, but that's nothing to what I used to get. So I will start the system up here by opening the valve to a setting of about nine, and that lets the water in through the jet. I lift the jet deflector out of the way. The electromagnet grabs here. And once it gets up to speed, the light comes on on the Hertz controller. And the Hertz controller will keep the electromagnet on so the jet deflector stays out of the way. Then what I do is I slow down the flow going through it to the minimum amount that the system will run on. And I can then see that the system is running at 60 Hertz and I can get ready to take a measurement as to how long it takes for this disk to go around once, which will give me an indication of how much wattage the machine is producing. As the water slowly drains out of the pipe, the pressure drops and the effective power drops. So the machine slows down. When it slows down below 50 hertz, it will shut down and I'll be out of power.